This is Nine News with Deborah Knight. Good evening. It was a victory that looked almost certain from the start. Mike Baird charming and convincing the people of New South Wales to choose him as Premier. And it's not just here in New South Wales that his re-election was critical for the coalition. Last night's result helping ease the pressure on a far less popular Prime Minister. Nine's political editor, Laurie Oakes, begins our coverage. It was a relief Prime Minister who boarded a VIP jet in Launceston this morning, headed for Lee Kuan Yew's funeral in Singapore. If the New South Wales election had gone badly for the Liberals after the defeat of coalition governments in Victoria and Queensland, Tony Abbott would have been preparing for his own political funeral. But Mike Baird's solid victory gave him a boost instead. I also want to acknowledge uh, the Prime Minister and his support. Mr Baird won despite a full-on Labor and Union scare campaign against his policy of privatising a large part of the New South Wales electricity distribution system. We decided uh, to be open with the people of New South Wales. From the moment counting of votes began last night, the result was never in doubt. Suffering a swing of over 9%, the Liberals lost some of the previously ultra-safe Labor electorates they'd won in a massive landslide four years ago. But that still left the Baird government on track to win 53 of the 93 lower house seats. Labor with a probable 34. The Greens look like winning four seats, independents too. As Labor leader Luke Foley said in his concession speech... Today the heartland has returned. He put the best spin possible on that limited success. We've gone from a rump in the state parliament to a real opposition. A damaging row has erupted over former Federal Labor Minister Martin Ferguson attacking Mr Foley's anti-privatisation campaign in Liberal commercials. And you don't get a bigger rat than Martin Ferguson. I, I would insist that he be expelled from the Labor Party. The bad victory will be used to put a bit of steel into the Abbott government at a time when the Prime Minister's leadership in security has caused it to go a bit wobbly on tough budget reform measures. I think what the take-out message is, people are ready for reform as long as it's explained to them. But a sobering aspect for the PM is that Mr Baird's success as a reform salesman is attributed in large part to his likeable personality and the popularity that gives him with voters. I don't think Tony would pretend he's popular. With this election out of the way, the May federal budget and how it's sold looms as Mr Abbott's next hurdle. Laurie Oakes, Nine News. He was elected by his party a year ago, but last night was the first time the people of New South Wales voted in Mike Baird as Premier. It was an emphatic victory, which he promises will change our city and state forever. It was the Premier's lap of honour. Heading to Manly for handshakes, waves and kisses, after a gruelling campaign, Mike Baird and his wife Karen simply soaked it all up. <laughs> <laughs> I'm very humbled uh, by what has been given to us last night and it's really, uh, it's time to get on with it. It was a decisive victory, but never a done deal. I love this state. What are you thinking when you're seeing the numbers coming up? What was going through your head? Well, it's, it's hard to describe. I mean, certainly um, you're, you're watching it, but you, you almost feel like you're, you're watching a movie rather than realising you're right in the middle of it. And, uh, certainly um, seeing those results came through as, as it, we got closer and closer I thought we, we, we could well get there and, uh, and I have to say that I was then filled with this amazing sense of excitement. The Premier has always said a win is a mandate so work will start immediately on selling the state's electricity assets. Mike Baird staked his political future on a controversial plan. Now his government needs to deliver $20 billion worth of infrastructure, including the West Connex Road project linking the M4 and M5, a second harbour road crossing, the Western Harbour Tunnel. There's also the Sydney Rapid Transit, a second rail tunnel under the harbour. More money for health, including almost a billion dollars to transform Westmead Hospital. One billion extra dollars for education, including a multi-storey high school in Parramatta and $200 million for our Opera House. Opposition leader Luke Foley took his winners out for Sunday brunch this morning. I get the fresh start <laughs> Labor won six seats back in the West, Londonderry, Macquarie Fields, Granville, Campbelltown, Prospect and the Blue Mountains. I want to thank 
uh, the people of Western Sydney, the Hunter and the Central Coast for returning to Labor in such large numbers. Hinting there may be a possible policy flip on blocking the poles and wires sale. After an election, uh, all policies are up for review. The Greens were beaming two Sydney MPs in the lower house, one and possibly two more on the north coast. Jamie Parker held on in Balmain, Jenny Leong the first Green in the new seat of Newtown. If any of the people in Newtown have anything to do with it, we won't see the West Connects motorway happening. A clear win for the coalition. The makeup of the upper house may muddy the waters. Lizzie Pearl, Nine News. And Laurie Oaks and Lizzie Pearl join us live.